Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you are new, a warm welcome to you, and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And before we get started uh, in the fundamentals and technicals, and I guess the uh, the news coming up uh, this week and the week ahead, I just wanted to um, really uh, 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 present, I guess, a fundamental analysis web. Webinar, uh, proposal to you guys and um, if I get a hundred likes on this video normally I get about 50 maybe 60 but if I get a hundred likes on this video I will do a free fundamental analysis uh, webinar and really go through uh, the steps that I use um, uh, to, to really kind of um, uh, uh, my approach to fundamental analysis and it's not just a simple um, you know looking at Forex factory and seeing if a data a news data release is you know positive and means buy if it's below the you know the forecast and sell it's nothing to do with that it's really understanding the rules to the fundamental game and it's not not a, I don't think anybody really talks about it on YouTube too much uh, but it's the rules to the fundamental mental game and I'm going to show you the, the, the really the step-by-step -step analysis that I use uh, fundamentally in order to um, you know uh, uh, decide on where the trend is going in the medium to long term and many of you who've watched my videos um, can just see recent examples of that for example on the, on the dollar right I've been saying you know long dollar for for ages um, against certain currency pairs mainly against probably the Swiss franc and the and the um, and the uh, dollar yen and uh, more recently the I say more recently but um, the euro dollar was always a was always a short and um, there were moments where it kind of wasn't but generally um, I've, I've been saying pretty much a week in week out long dollar and uh, you're seeing the result of that on the price chart and we'll go over that so it's all driven by fundamental analysis and I'm going to show you pretty much um, how I go about doing that so 100 likes in this video if I if I get that then within the next uh, couple of weeks I will sort out a webinar for for you guys and um, and yeah I'll, I'll sort that out anyways uh, let's get into the uh, the week ahead and going to trading economics looking at the week ahead um, all eyes turn to the US employment report next week which is probably which will probably show jobs growth accelerated in September as well as worldwide services PMI surveys and an OPEC plus meeting say OPEC plus <laughs> OPEC meeting that is uh, expected to offer guidance into the coalition's production plan so that's going to be quite important US employment um, is definitely going to be something to watch and I'll go into why in, in, in a sec when we get into kind of the nitty gritty of the, the charts and the, some deeper fundamental analysis elsewhere key data to watch for include US foreign trade balance and factory orders um, Eurozone retail trade UK house prices Australia business morale and Japan household spending and current account um, central banks in Australia New Zealand that's going to be uh, uh, an important one and India will be deciding on monetary policy Australia not so much because I, I think both of them matter of fact it's pretty much known what they're likely to do and um, if the Australia basically surprise or if New Zealand surprise and, and a surprise for the Australia, Australian bank I guess the RBA would be if they were to potentially hike or cut rates yeah um, because they're expected to hold and if the New Zealand dollar who are expected to hike rates don't hike rates then you know there's there's some trading opportunities there but for now um, you know the market has pretty much priced in um, these um, uh, uh, rate hikes or, or holds so no real major surprises probably on the day because again the big money has pretty much made their money and it would be retail traders who are lagging behind um, and uh, gonna get smoked really if they if they really start to buy and sell on the announcement anyways um, yeah so we've got some we've got some market moving news this uh, this 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 coming week so let's get into really the uh, the technicals and some deeper fundamentals on the uh, starting off on the dollar index DXY and the dollar index so again uh, really been talking about you know pretty much long going long on the dollar especially recently 
Um, I've been talking about long dollar from way back in uh, June around here when the uh, Federal Reserve were talking about, you know, tapering and you've pretty much seen what's happened, right? But last week during FOMC, um, and in fact, I kind of break it down in this video right here, uh, which is called Forex News Trading Masterclass, I've done it on the 25th of September. Actually, it was recorded, I think it was on the 22nd or something like that. Um, uh, live FOMC Euro Dollar Analysis and Trade Setup. And in this, in this video, I go through why, um, you know, I was, uh, uh, long dollar especially against you know the euro um and really kind of break down the news on that one but and it's re really worth worth a watch so any kind of supply zones that you were looking at trying to short and you wouldn't really really been shorting on the dollar index you would have probably been looking at you know a, a dollar cross uh for me it really wasn't you know the pair to to to, to really go short on right because ultimately um price isn't driven by technicals right there are technical factors but it's not driven in the medium to long term um by by technical analysis there's no um you know supply zone or demand zone that's going to stand in the way of if the market thinks that this is a bargain area right for the dollar there's going to be more buying there's going to be more demand it doesn't matter what stands in the way of that yeah that's the reason why supply and demand zones don't hold because the the market generally thinks that it's not there's no value particular value there or there's a lot of value there right it's either cheap or expensive but getting into um you know this week's important news in u.s growth re-accelerated after third quarter covid speed bump right so um uh, uh ing think that the consumer sector will lead a fourth quarter rebound in the and with the economy set to grow by close to five percent next year so that's really important and really why is that important and it's because it jobs will basically um paves the way uh for a potential fed tapering right so the fed want the economy to be dependent they don't want to have to support the economy and print money which devalues the dollar so um in order to taper they need to know that the economy is self-sustainable right they need to know and one of the signs i guess is um jobs one of the major signs is hiring and employment right so jobs is a major factor of a growing economy so the question is will jobs will us job numbers pave the way for fed tapering right so um you know there's 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 a massive massive um uh, uh, pressure i guess you know um on the economy and uh, really on the Fed, right? Because the Fed could easily change their mind. If if, if the job numbers disappoint, then the Fed are gonna have to do, will pretty much, you know, reconsider tapering, which then the dollar will, is probably likely to, you know, revalue and, 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 and sell off. But also as well, you've got another kind of headwinds when it comes to the debt ceiling, right? So what is the debt ceiling and what happens if Congress doesn't raise it? Pretty much the debt ceiling and its creation in 1917 was supposed to make it easier for finance World War One um uh sorry to finance world war one by grouping bonds into different categories easing the burden on congress to approve each bond separately with world war ii looming the 1939 congress created the first aggregate debt limit and gave the treasury department wide latitude on what bonds to issue bonds being government debt right so at the moment right there's a there's a debt limit right there's a government debt limit and um if they don't raise that limit, then obviously there's going to be uh, some problems, right? Because they need to, because they can't afford, you know, to to kind of pay the uh, the, the government debt, right? So uh, the debt need the debt ceiling needs to be raised, and um, my take is that they 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 will. They not they're not going to have the you know the the the, um, the government debt not be paid and and default, right? So the country default on its debt, so that would just be cat catastrophic so um there's going to be a lot of uh, politics around it but eventually they're going to come to some sort of deal but it is a headwind in the short term meaning that it is a risk event in the short term and something you have to be aware of so if you do start to see the dollar you know fall away doesn't mean you know that, that it's not going to go higher in the short term as long as they you know um uh, deal with the debt ceiling which they you know are likely to for me i think if you are looking to buy the dollar and you want the DXY's confluence, then you're looking at uh, this area here, the 9348 uh, as your first 
as your first type of confluence, anywhere within that zone, if prices start to turn up in there, um, then you're looking for some dollar crosses to potentially get long. Again, this is not financial advice because ultimately you could see, you know, the debt, you know, if the, if the debt uh, uh, ceiling doesn't get, you know, um, uh, uh, raised, then this is probably going to go all the way through all of these zones, right? Also, as well, it depends on uh, jobs as well because because jobs. Again, as we know, the jobs data uh, um, uh, really kind of guides monetary policy. So if jobs disappoints as well, then we could see a, a really big pullback. But ultimately, um, you know, the economy should recover. And, uh, you know, this, these are just basically great buying opportunities, in my opinion, uh, for the dollar, as long as the data supports the narrative. Right. So the, the data has to support the narrative regarding um, tapering and potential interest rate hikes. So we've reached, you know, uh, quite a, a high. We've also got, you know, some sub supply zones just right there. But I think for now, I think this is probably the, 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 the limit of the uh, of the range of what, you know, dollar value is all about. Right over the past uh you know year or so yeah because that has been actually a year from uh from september 24th yeah so it's reached a, a a 12 month high anyways um so yeah lots to look forward to this week dollar yen no surprise that you've seen again dollar break through these supply zones we have created now a bit of a um another supply zone up top not necessarily the strongest supply in the world uh, but it's there um, and I think our nearest yet yeah, demand zone is all the way down here so unless prices start to make you know higher highs and then you get a pullback into that demand zone which would be somewhere around here um, the nearest demand zone is going to be all the way down at the 109 areas now again um, the, the dollar or the yen strengthens on based off risk off sentiment so um, uh, if there is any risk off sentiment or there is some bad news regarding uh, jobs um, um, and, and the US then you can probably expect in fact prices to really kind of sell off because I think uh, the dollar is definitely at an expensive area so uh, there'll be a lot of profit taking a lot of short uh, trades coming in uh, people uh, trade is short in the dollar so um, so yeah I think it's really kind of data dependent uh, similar thing with the dollar uh, Swiss again we've had this nice move higher but um, kind of broken through that supply zone, this little one right here, and again, not the strongest area of supply, not by f uh, not by a long shot, but at the end of the day, there is some supply there. And again, I think if you are looking at buying, any kind of pullbacks are gonna be down into this zone right here. So pullbacks, and then it's at 92.45 area, 0 0.9245. Um, and again, similar to the Swiss, um, sorry, the, the, the Japanese yen, uh, it's more of a risk off uh, play. If, there's, if there is risk off, for example, um, uh, any kind of coronavirus outbreaks or, or global um, uh, economic financial crisis, you know, you've got Evergrande, etc., then the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen really would be uh, the ones to buy. But uh, for now, I think the dollar um, is probably a buy until, uh, again, the data doesn't support that narrative. Dollar CAD, dollar CAD um, pretty much going sideways. The, the Canadian dollar is actually picking up in a bit of strength. Um, still might be a bit slightly early to look to buy the, the Canadian dollar, but I think when it does turn around, I think it should be really good. Um, also as well, you have had oil uh, making, you know, I think it's reached $80 recently and it's been going higher and higher. So that's aided the Canadian dollar um, meaning that if you want to be a buyer of Canadian dollar, then you're looking at you know short trades. So um, if the if the uh, if oil keeps you know uh, supporting the Canadian dollar keeps going higher, then potentially you could start to see a bit of a you know uh, a down move. But ultimately, you've got two strong currencies um, uh, or, and two central banks that are looking to hike rates. Hopefully, you know well, next year or the year after, competing with each other. So the trend is probably looking at you know uh, uh, stopping for now. It's probably more of a ranging market, um, sideways moving market, or fair value um in in the short term but again it just depends on uh what goes on fundamentally moving on to the new zealand dollar us dollar and um there was a massive move on the uh on uh on the new zealand dollar last week and i do think that it was really kind of like a clear out um you know the the, the fact that um 
uh, the, the banks do want to buy the New Zealand dollar and uh, I think a lot of traders were ended up being long at this area here right of, of demand right with traders looking to go long especially with that nice big outside candle that engulfing candle lots of stop losses below that and then it's just taking them all out drawing traders to go short and now this whole area here between this low and this high is actually what is known as a bargain area right because if this is expensive if this area here is expensive this area is, is, is a bargain we know it to be a bargain in the past August the 20th because prices went higher right they was making higher highs higher lows so again the opportunity to buy for cheap just before the RBNZ looked to hike rates what better place to, to buy than at this level this 60 um, 0 0.688 level right um, so there you go but um, ultimately uh, I would probably say let me just get rid of some of this uh, some of these drawings um, they are the, the New Zealand dollar is ahead of the of the US dollar so I think if you were looking to buy this currency pair somewhere you'd really have to wait for some sort of demand and if it pulls back even more that's going to be a fantastic buy I think um, or you're looking for higher highs higher lows to be made and then a pullback into that you know demand zone before looking at getting long for short trade right let's say for example the um, the RBNZ do not look to uh, high crates and you see prices drift up this week and then all of a sudden the, there's no high, um, rate hike then that there is going to be a very 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 nice uh, short trade because it would have taken the market off guard as they are trying to price in I guess the uh, New Zealand dollar hike uh, moving on to the pound dollar and the pound right um, pound is something that um, you know I've I, I was looking to get short on not necessarily on this pair but um, in the group we did some uh, some really good analysis uh, last week and if, which worked out to be uh, quite quite a um, uh, good uh, short trade right this week and um, there was a bank F MUFG that was talking about going short matter of fact and we did that analysis last week in the group and uh, it actually worked out a really good uh, uh, trade on the uh, pound dollar um, but um, I was looking at getting short on another uh, a couple of pairs as far as, uh, well, mainly the pound New Zealand, which I didn't manage to get in, involved in just yet. But if the opportunity does present itself, then uh, that would be the pair that I'm looking at getting uh, short on when it comes to the pound. Now, uh, pounds obviously sold off. There's some, uh, some major, I guess, uh, quite a wide demand zone I'd probably say somewhere around there these levels have, have gone and um, what have we got here we've got some a bit of support as well support here which is coming uh, for that in that demand zone so um, if you are looking at getting um, short on this currency pair which I probably would uh, start to look for any kind of short trades because there is a divergence now right you've got the um, the pound which is um, not doing so well and we look at the fundamentals and uh, the pound at the lowest level since 2020 as stagflation crisis fears take hold stagflation is just simply uh, when you have uh, rising inflation but you don't have um, the uh, you have a uh, slow growth slow economic growth which is what stagflation is and so when you have a mixture when, when the stagflation word is used it's uh, it's a tough spot for the central banks to really kind of do anything with monetary policy because um, ultimately they have to ride they have to hike interest rates based off of um, the economy as well not just inflation so you have a US dollar that is doing decently and then you have the pound which isn't doing so great right so hence the reason why you're seeing you know you saw that this week we have there's a lot of headwinds when it comes to the pound uh, fuel crisis there's the furlough um, scheme ending to think about um, energy crisis you know what I mean so there's loads and loads of things um, that was uh, really um, indicating that you know we should go uh, short on the pound this week and you can see how it's pretty much uh, worked out but again if you do want to go long on the pound now it's pretty much a decent level but technically again the path and least, least resistance is going to be to the to the downside if you ever see something like that or a lower low and a pullback to a lower high uh, or it pulls back to that zone which creates should create like some sort of lower high 
uh, and then a lower low. So that would be where um, my bias would be on this currency pair. Moving on to the Euro dollar and again, Euro dollar, I uh, said it uh, again last week um, um, around FOMC uh, that really the, the play was to the short side. And um, since that, in fact, since that video, prices have moved quite a bit in fact the entry would have been just around here around this level this 1.175 area right and it's moved over yeah over 100 what, about 180 pips nearly 190 pips since that uh trade and that was again was posted right here in real time right so it's not a hindsight bias trade it was this was a live call with the uh, members in the group and uh, we went over this and uh, pretty much from this trade idea there was about 180 pips to be made anyways um again because the dollar is looking to high crates or that's the rumor anyway um demand zones are really not going to stand in the way of, of, of that. So now, once it's broken down beyond that zone, you're either looking at some sort of stop hunt potentially, uh, which is definitely beyond the scope of this video, but um, your next demand zones are going to be really down at these 114, 113 areas. It doesn't mean that prices can't reverse you know, from, from right now, right? They, they definitely can, but from the perspective of you'd have to really kind of see prices price would have to prove that there's demand there then that creates the demand zone and then you're looking for a pullback but until that happens why you know why look to go long there there's no proof to the left a chart that there was ever it was ever really you know a, a great level or great zone or a great area to look to go you know long in right so so uh, no demand zone there so um that's that out of the question but you're looking at nice little supply zone at that 117 uh, which I think is going to be a really nice area to look for any kind of shorts uh, and then look for short trade right there I think is really really nice um, I think there's lots of traders that would have got long here as well bit of a CPR uh, for those of you that know what CPR means capture pain relief and how to trade it I think that's going to be quite a decent area as well so um, yeah I do like that um looking towards now the euro yen and the euro yen um i do like this zone just below for a, for a buy um again if prices come down i think this level has been touched once or well, it's been touched once this is the first actually no it's been touched several times matter of fact if you drag it back from here you're looking at probably uh this is going to be the second time right yeah so there so you're looking at that, so that zone has been touched once, twice. So this could break down, of course, there's no guarantee, but the more times the level is touched, the weaker it becomes. So I think it could come down even further. If it does, then brilliant. I think that's a nice buy. I think as, as weak as the euro is, I think the, the, the yen is probably weaker. I'd only really buy the yen in the risk-off environment, and even then it would have to be a major risk-off um, uh, scenario uh, looking at more supply zones I think that's a nice supply zone to potentially look for any kind of short trades nice fresh area of supply but again if, if, if we're in a risk on environment I think the euro is going to be a really decent buy especially when they start to get their act together and uh, their central bank becomes a bit more hawkish on rates and uh, monetary policy looking at the Australian dollar US dollar again there was a decent um uh, bit of a stop hunt i should say uh the, the australian dollar um uh, i think is 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 has the potential to you know outperform but for now their central bank is very dovish and um i think it's probably maybe one of the last central banks alongside uh, the euro to potentially look to high crates so unfortunately unfortunately the australian dollar isn't a buy yet although technically this 0 0.715 area is absolutely lovely. I really like that technically. I just don't like it um, at the moment fundamentally. But um, if you are looking to go long, that's going to be the area to go long. If you're looking to go short, then you're looking at you know a short trade. Looking at probably right now. So um, that'd be decent for a potential short. But again, um, 
I think the uh, if the US misses when it comes to their jobs report, then actually, in fact, this is going to be a really decent buy, but it would be based off of really mainly um, dollar weakness, not Australian dollar strength. Moving on to the um, uh, the Aussie yen and Aussie yen again this week, a uh, bit of a range uh, reacted off of this supply zone here. And then it's kind of sold off a little bit. I'll use that. I'll just probably just use this whole area. Matter of fact, again, not the strongest area of supply, but there is some supply in that at the top of that candle. That might be worth a look. Um, but daily wise, it's not great. But I think um, from again a, a path for these resistance perspective, I think if risk is on, I think any pullbacks to that demand zone is going to be a really really nice buy. Even better would be. Uh, down at the lows and uh, again any kind of short trades potentially right now I'd probably say again maybe above that 81 area for a potential short or even that 82 that's a very nice uh, technical trade I think but again it'd be more driven by whether we're in a risk on a risk off environment and uh, what um, you know uh, I say monetary policy but from a monetary policy perspective the Australian dollar is a is ahead of the Aussie um, Australian dollar is ahead of the Japanese yen so my bias would be more to the upside and finally gold uh, gold kind of bounced off of this area here on the uh, I guess a dollar some dollar weakness uh, and again looking at um, jobs is going to be the major probably driver in the, of the dollar which means you know the, the that gold moves in the opposite uh, direction uh, to to the dollar. So if the dollar starts to sell off, then you should want to see prices go to the upside. But if there's any good news on the dollar, then pretty much the path again of these resistance is going to be to the downside. Um, you know, gold prices are really going to be driven lower by a stronger dollar at the moment. So it's not necessarily fantastic for gold. Um, it's really kind of hold your breath, um, you know, uh, territory. If, you, if you're looking to trade gold, you really have to kind of believe that um, the uh, Federal Reserve aren't going to hike rates and that inflation is going to get out of control and that the economic recovery is going to stall, which is basically stagflation, right? Once there's stagflation talk for the dollar, I think gold would be a really decent buy. But um, let's see what happens uh, this week at uh, with the jobs report on Friday. Anyways, that brings me to the end of the video. And again, just a quick reminder, you know, 100 likes and I will sort out a webinar um, for you guys really kind of breaking down how to do uh, fundamental analysis step by step and um, it really open up your eyes to how um, you know uh, you, you should apply fundamentals to technicals really first and how fundamentals can really guide you and um, and uh, it's just really for me anyway the only way to trade uh, technical analysis is, is is has its has its um, place in trading of course but for me my guiding light my north star is fundamental analysis and then going down into the technicals anyways take care have a great trading week and don't forget to like 100 likes and uh, speak to you soon take care